Now we make a quick, uh, just welcome everybody. Um, obviously we're here uh, to celebrate, you know, us drafting uh, JC and with the seventh overall pick last night, we have his family here uh, in town with us. Um, it's been great having him around the building, you know, getting him around and having people here to meet him in the lobby, all the different staff members. He's met some of his uh, teammates so far, you know, main one being Will. Uh, I think you guys saw the picture circulating last night of them FaceTiming and, you know, Will was in here today getting some uh, early work um, and JC was here. So it was good to have those guys connect and uh, we're glad to have him. So um, don't you have anything before we bring him up? No, really excited to add JC. Uh, to our team, to the offensive line. I mean, you guys will, you guys will see the type of person he is as you get to speak to him. We spoke to him a little bit, but fantastic person, um, big man on top of it, <laughs> um, and and really someone we're excited to add to the group and to the team. I think that's the most important part. Uh, these guys are all considered good players when you're drafting in these spots, and and to add uh, someone of his character and, and quality of, of person is uh, just as important to us as as his quality of play, and. Um, you know, I think you see you see his energy through the building already um, as we walked around, and uh, it's been really exciting to have him, and I'm um, really excited to see what's to come. All right, so with that said, you know we're going to introduce uh, J.C. Latham. Guys, be nice. It's his first one. <laughs> what the last 24 hours been like for you? Uh, it's been amazing. You know, I got to celebrate and enjoy it with my family. Um, I was born in Mississippi, moved to Milwaukee with my pops, my brother and stepmom. Uh, and then I went to IMG and, you know, everywhere I've been, um, my whole family wasn't able to, you know, be a part of it uh, just because of um, different dynamics of our our life. But, uh, you know, being able to celebrate the biggest moment with everybody in my life was really special to me. You look like you carried 342 pretty easily, but is that a situation where when you get into the league, you know that number might have to go up or down some? Uh, yeah, I want to play around like the 345 range, so um, you know it won't be nothing too too hard to maintain. Um, you know, got a little bit of extra money now, so I can have a better nutrition and diet. So, yeah. You feel fast at that weight then? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You spent so much time with this organization, you know, leading up to the draft. What were some of the highlights as far as like the chemistry you guys seem to develop uh, right away? Yeah, um, just starting at the combine, you know, a lot of a lot of my teammates and um, agents were saying the teams that were really tense in the um, interview process are the teams that are serious about you. So, um, you know, I had an uh, interview with this team at, at, I think it was my fourth one. I had 25 in one night um, when I went to the combine. Uh, these guys were the fourth one, and the coach was telling me, you know, just uh, be prepared to – for a tense environment, they got the seventh pick, and they're really considering taking an offensive lineman. And when I got my um, 30 visit, Coach Callahan was one of the guys I spoke to right before um, lunch, and it was supposed to be a 30-minute conversation. Ended up being a two-hour conversation, just you know, picking each other's brains, uh, figuring out the the background of where you know we both came from, uh, watching film, going over technique, just you know, talking about a whole bunch of things. So um, you know, the chemistry was definitely there. Um, really enjoyed it. You know, it, it was a really special day for me. Also, the day of the um, eclipse. So, you know, it was just a lot of things I was aligning that day when I came here. Is there anybody, player or two, that you kind of patterned your game after? Any tackles that you look up to that had success in the league? Yeah, um, Trent Williams, obviously, he's a standard at um, offensive line. You know, every lineman dreams to, you know, play up to his uh, caliber of play. Um, he wins in an unorthodox manner. You know, he does it in his way, and he gets the job done. Uh, you look at the guy I played right tackle. Lane Johnson was a hall, or well, not was, but is a Hall of Famer at that position, and um, that's why I, I want to model my game after just the level of cons consistency that he has um, on a play in and play out basis. So you know, uh, those two guys are guys that I try to emulate. JC, before that con long conversation with uh, with Bill, Bill Callahan, how much about him uh, did you know? Um, and I, I guess just for you knowing his. Pedigree, you referred to him last night as a legendary coach. Just how how excited are you knowing kind of your aspirations to get to work with a guy who's molded some of the you know, better offensive linemen in the history of the league? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm extremely excited. Um, you know, I, I knew he was the coach with the Cowboys back with uh, Tyron Smith, and you know, he coached the Bills with Jedrick Willis. Um, and those two guys are, are great players as well. You know, and uh, just looking at the tape. And seeing, you know, going over all the different techniques that he instills just on one single play, his uh, attention to detail is, you know, next to none. And knowing that that's going to be my positional coach, you know, um, I had Saban coming out of high school. 
And, you know, he's a great coach, but uh, he wasn't my positional coach. So, you know, I was really just learning the discipline aspects of everything, how to go about being a pro and being great. But to have somebody in my corner on a day in and day out basis, I mean, that's, that's any player's dream. Jason, you had to make a switch from D line and left tackle at IMG. You're making that switch back again. How much does being through that process already help you in this process having to do it again? Yeah, um, making that switch from D line, left tackle, left to right, playing guard as well, and then back to left. Um, you know, it, it's hard. It's hard for sure, but uh, just consistency and um, discipline on every single day to just be the best version of yourself. And you know, I did it at IMG and Alabama when at the time were the pinnacles of, you know, high school and college football. So, you know, it wasn't like I was just doing it at a, a regular school. I was, I was doing this at, you know, the top schools in their, in their, um, in their you know, realm of what they, they play in, you know. So I was going against the best competition in an uncomfortable situation. So now that versatility status is with me, and, you know, I, I, I'm comfortable doing whatever I need to do for the um, success of the team. Why did you stay in that position after Evan Neal left? <laughs> Why did you stay at right tackle? Uh, Saving for like uh, that was what's best for the team. What led you to IMG? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Saving had a quote that he said, um, when a student is ready to learn, the teacher will appear. In my whole life, you know, I've been moving around from different leagues, um, looking for the hardest league that can challenge me. And I found, I thought I found that at Oak Creek. Um, ended up wanting to go to Catholic Memorial. Felt like it was better. Uh, for me, I think they won state the year before I got there, and you know, uh, I think they had like 14 total state um, titles. Um, the coaches became the um, most winningest coach in all of high school football in the state of Wisconsin, and um, they went on a three-year back-to-back-to-back state run after I left. So I knew that was the school that I wanted to go to and better myself at. You know, that coach, Coach Bill Young, taught me to be where your feet are. And, um, you know, I was a great coach. And uh, by my sophomore year, I was top 10 in the country, number three in my position as a um, defensive end. And that's when IMG came. And eventually, you know, IMG led to Alabama. So I kind of lived by Saban's motto um, unknowingly as far as, you know, when a student is ready to learn, the teacher will appear. You get to meet with Will Levis. I think obviously we saw the pictures down there. What was the combo like? I know it was probably a quick one. And then yeah. how unique is it to have two two young guys in just such critical positions and knowing you're kind of protecting this guy? Yeah, um, you know, he was a rookie last year. So, uh, you know, he knows everything I'm going to go through. And, you know, he kind of got me through, you know, the adversities of especially being an offensive player, what to expect um, in a new team, you know. Um, so there's that portion of it. But uh, also just – we're kind of both in this together. You know, he only has a year above me, so, you know, it's not like he's a 10-year, 15-year guy in the league. You know, we're kind of going through all the uh, same things, trying to build the team up um, uh, and live by the motto of being resilient and relentless that what the team goes by. So, You've talked, you've talked about you know, not, not, it's not going to be easy. You're going to have to deal with adversity. But what are some things you've gone through maybe, well, it's, maybe it's a player that you learn from, made you work harder to get to where you are now? I mean, honestly, just, you know, I didn't really have a, a player that I kind of learned adversity from, um, but I really picked it up a lot, just understanding, like, to just never give up in it. Uh, from Jay Lamiro, that was a guy who taught me a lot and instilled a lot um, unknowingly, you know. Um, you know, the adversity that he faced last year, I've never seen a player face that um, personally in my life. Uh, you know, after the Texas A&M game two years ago, he was receiving death threats and, you know, a whole bunch of uh, negativity coming his way. And he's the first one in and always showing up with a smile on his face. And um, being the quarterback of the team, that's extremely important. But I know it's extremely hard to to try to balance, you know, um, even though your own fans not really liking you. And he had to win them over. But, um, you know, he was benched after week two against Texas um, when we lost. And, you know, I know you guys seen a video of him on the sideline celebrating um, with the second and third string quarterbacks and, you know, just cheering everybody on. So the amount of adversity that he faced and he acknowledged it after the Georgia um, win when we uh, played them in the SEC championship game, um, saying that, you know, the, the world gave up on him, but he didn't give up on himself. And that's something that, you know, I feel like everybody can take from, you know, it doesn't really matter who believes in you or who doesn't as long as you never give up on yourself and always believe in yourself. Where you, where you want to play weight-wise. What's the heaviest you've played at? What's the heaviest you've been? Yeah, I was 360 last year. Um, played great at it. You know, it wasn't a big deal. I was in shape. Uh, I was 290, lean muscle mass. So, I mean, you know, it wasn't like, um, you know, it was like a crazy, crazy thing. You know, it was just gained 20 pounds of muscle the last off season. so. 
You said you view yourself as a left tackle, so how excited are you for that challenge to make that switch back, prove yourself as an NFL left tackle, and, and do that right away? I'm, you know, I'm extremely excited. You know, it's a challenge. I love going, uh, facing challenges, and, you know, I love a good challenge. Uh, and to get back to the left tackle, you know, the pinnacle of the O-line and just be able to compete at the highest level, I mean, who, who if you're a true competitor, you love that situation. The coaches, you get Josh Allen twice a year. You're going to get Will Anderson twice a year. There's, there's, there's no weeks off in this. Yeah. I mean, how much, how, how daunting does that look to you? I mean, you know, I'm, I don't never want to say you want to look ahead, but, you know, being at Alabama, the one thing that our coaches said all the time, when you play teams like Georgia, LSU, Texas, you know, they say you came to Alabama for this purpose, and that's right. You want to play in those big games. Every game's a big game now, you know. So, I mean, for me to come to Alabama to play in the big games and now I'm playing in all big games, you know, that, that just gives me goosebumps. So. What were your battles against Will like in practice? I, that was insane. I loved going against him. I remember we had a night practice, and, you know, he, he's great at bull rush, but he did want to expand his pass rush um, moves. And I remember we had numerous uh, different periods, you know, 5 on 4 9 on 9 where it's just one O-lineman going with one D-lineman or two D-lineman and two O-lineman. Um, one on one pass rush, team pass, um, fastball, all that stuff, and we in, we had all the periods um, live. Um, and the first play, um, he did a bull rush, and you know when Will bull rushes, he keeps his hands extremely tight to his chest so you can't see his numbers head down. So he's dang he's dang near spearing you <laughs> when he bull rush. And um, I remember it caught me off guard because I'm like, okay, he's 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 bringing it, he's bringing the juice. All right, let me match him. You know, it's Will Anderson and. You know, we had, I think we had to go three plays in a row. That's how I was uh, set up right there. And the second play, bull rush. And the third play, bull rush. And I'm thinking, I'm like, dog, there's no way he's finna bull rush the whole practice. Like, it's just insane. When I tell you three hours later, all he did the whole day was bull rush, I was like, yeah, that was, that's Will Anderson. So I, I just love going against him. You know, uh, a play that stood out, um, our coach called him the, um, the Terminator. Um, uh, we had a, play action play and coach told me you know if there's somebody in the b gap help if nobody's in the b gap help the two tight ends backside you know um and we had um guy robbie Oots and um i think it was cameron latu at the time um they had to block will and i'm looking and i'm thinking i'm like there's no way like you know will gets through both of them you know it's a play action play he might get through one but he's not getting through robbie you know robbie's a big guy he's a big tight end you know so he, he's not getting through him and he grabbed Latu and he just shrugged him. And I, I don't think I'm like, okay, well, I was pretty quick, so <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe he might, he might cause Utsa a little bit of a problem. So you know, let me, let me just um, be ready to help out if he needs to, you know. And the way he just threw Utsa out the way, like it was no hesitation. He just ran through two guys <laughs> like that, and he comes to me and just bull rushes me and tries to put me in the quarterback's lap. You know, I'm thinking like, yeah, this guy's, this guy's crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, I loved going against him. I, I, I can't wait to go against him again. You were talking about some off-season work you've been doing, obviously working back on the left side. Um, what's kind of some of the things you've been doing? And I know you worked with Pooty too. <laughs> yeah. Um, I worked with Pooty last summer. That was more hand-eye coordination, uh, things like that to get your hand usage um, up. You know, his, his drills were really intense. You know, he was telling guys to, you know, punch you in the face if um, your hands weren't, you weren't ready, you know. So he he have a guy throw a punch and you had to kind of deflect it. Um, rather than trying to avoid it. So, um, you know, that was something that he was really big on. Um, and, and, it, and it helped for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, my, my mentor and coach specifically was George Hegeman. That was one of the guys that I worked on um, intricately. And, you know, he played with the Cowboys, with Larry Allen and um, Dion when they were winning, um, you know, Super Bowls over there. Played with the Eagles, um, with Jeremiah Trotter. Um, and then he played with the Buccaneers as well. So, um, you know, just taking his knowledge of the game and, you know, going over there, we were really just fine tuning the little things within my technique, you know, um, keeping square, staying low, you know, not exposing your chest, hand placement, not rising up late within the um, rep, and, you know, just being able to um, every step, whether it's run game or pass game, be intent with it. So, why did you choose not to do uh, any testing at, at the combine or your pro day? Yeah, I had a high ankle sprain that I didn't know about. Um, I thought it was a regular ankle sprain. You know, I'm not one to, you know, I pride myself on um, being available and uh, availability. And I just remember, um, I just remember that last play of the game, even one of my friends, uh, he's right back there. He was asking me how I didn't, you know, tear my ACL um, on that last play. The quarterback just ran directly into my knee. He was trying to make a play, uh, something out of nothing. And he obviously didn't see it, but you know, he see his knee drives right in the back of my knee. 
Um, and you know, my knee was perfectly fine, but you know, my ankle kind of got rolled up on and I'm thinking it's a regular ankle sprain. So, you know, um, we just lost the game. We, I left to go to, um, we left to go to Alabama and then I ended up going to, um, to, um, Florida to go train three days later. And I remember it was hurting, but I just thought it, you know, I'll get to work and let it heal for an extra day. And just throughout that whole process, um, it just never healed, you know, whenever I tried to cut or whatever the case may be. So, you know, we decided to call it off and just focus on positional stuff because there wasn't a lot of cutting within pass sets. Um, we get to the combine, we do the measure, I mean, not the measurements, the, um, the doctors, and he feels the swelling still there and a little bit tender. And he tells me it was a, it was a high ankle sprain I just didn't know about, so. Wearing gloves sometimes when you play, you haven't worn them other times. Is, is there a kind of a rhyme or reason behind when, when you do and when you don't? Uh, yeah, the only times I wore gloves when I was bleeding. Um, yeah, they told me, yeah, if you get caught with blood on your hands, you got to come out. So they made me wear gloves whenever my hands would get blood on them um, or whenever I'd be, like, scratched up really bad. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I just remember just, you know, I'm, I'm really um, – amazed by the human body. And one of the things about the human body, you know, when you're, I'm sure it's happening to everybody, when you go swimming, or whatever case may be in those wrinkles in your hand, um, it, it's like when your skin adapts to water, so it allows you to grip wet surfaces um, when you get those wrinkles. And being in Alabama, you know, practicing through rain or whatever case may be, a whole bunch of sweat, whatever it is, you know, your hand can kind of grip wet objects. You know, when you wear gloves, it kind of gets pretty slippery. So, you know, I just took the whole equation out and just started playing without gloves. Going back to your time at IMG, you were involved in an interesting game against the Bishop Sycamore team. What, yeah. <laughs> yeah. what are your memories of that game, man? Uh, I remember one of the guys, he was big and he had like a full grown beard, like, like even like even fuller than mine right now. And like I, I never talked to the other players. I really don't care to talk to them, but I just I had to ask him like, yo, like, like how old are you, fam? <laughs> and he told me he was like twenty and I was like I was just amazed by it, but I'm like, no, there's no way he's twenty. I'm 17 like you know what I mean so um yeah then the next year I remember um because one of the guys on the team Tyler Booker uh he was still there he's a year younger than me so I'm a freshman in college he's a senior at uh, IMG and he's telling me he's like yeah all these guys are like it's a whole like crazy program like x y and z we saw guys swapping helmets back and forth so and then yeah it'll be in the documentary literally like the next week it, it was crazy I, I didn't know about it but yeah I played them the year before that situation happened so. You look forward to find it, to build a bond with Peter Skaronski, who was a rookie here last year, first round pick, and playing alongside him as they rebuild this line. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm I'm extremely um, excited and uh, stoked to uh, do it. You know, just even not even with him, just the whole O line and offense as a whole. You know, uh, playing O line, that's the most um, um, vital position to um, every single team. You know, games are won and lost in the trenches. You know, um, and I'm not trying to say nothing wrong with the D line. Um, but if two guys get pancaked or whatever the case may be and, uh, on the D-line, but one guy gets a sack, you know, it all works out. You know, in O-line, if a guy gets beat out of one of the five, the whole play is dead. So you need all five to work as one. And, um, yeah, so I'm extremely excited to, to play with him and to play with everybody else on that O-line. We see you here you all smiles in, in this press conference yeah. and others, but on the field it's a lot different. Like you yeah. play with a nasty streak. What is it that makes you convert to that? Yeah, it's just a uh, flip of the switch mindset. Um, one thing, you know, I picked up from Kobe and like Jordan, all those greats, like they find something that kind of triggers them and puts them in that mindset to like really just run through a guy's face and do it continuously, like Marshawn Lynch said, like over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, you know? So um, that's that kind of mindset that you got to have. You know, it's all cool to be nice and cordial outside. Um, of the field and all that stuff, but when you're on the field, you know, it's a whole different mindset. And, um, you know, success of the team first, but when you break it down, you got to dominate your box. And, you know, that's the mindset that I take. What triggers you? Say again? What triggers you? I mean, anything, you know, um, things as little as why I'm not playing left when I was at Alabama. Uh, other things as, you know, just matchups, you know, guys thinking they can match up with me, um, whatever the case may be. You know, I got a grill in now, but I don't play with a grill in. And I remember it pissed me off. The first time I saw a guy uh, play with a grill in against me, I'm thinking he's caring about more how he looks than me, you know? So I take that uh, with a lot of disrespect. Like, you know, the guy doesn't think I'm an uh, issue to, you know, worry about, like, oh, I can dress up how I want to dress up because JC's not a problem, you know? So that really, uh, that things like that triggers me. Back to the gloves and the blood, how often do you feel like you play literally with blood on your hands? Um, during, like, training camp, you know, it's a lot of reps. So probably, like, maybe, like, 
I don't know. It doesn't. When it happens, it happens a lot. So like, if I end up like cutting myself or whatever, because maybe with the helmet or shoulder pads, it'll probably happen probably for like the next three days until I let the scar heal. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll play without it all the way up until I need to. So. JC, who's your biggest? Who's your biggest inspiration uh, for playing football to, to reaching this level and, and why? Yeah, um, my one of my brothers over there in the back over there. Uh, that's my biggest inspiration. Also, on top of my two younger sisters and youngest brother, you know, I want to be able to provide a lifestyle for them that, you know, they didn't have uh, growing up. You know, um, I don't want to say it was it was cliche, but you know, we just weren't. Um, having the best financial situation um, as a lot of families have and you know I mean being blessed with the um, talent that I have that was God given and the hard work that I put in I have a chance to to change that and I want to better their futures and their paths and um, yeah that, that's that's my main reason on why. Thanks, appreciate it.